So what is the strategy for divide and conquer algorithms? Very simple. Three terms, divide, conquer, combine. Good, DCC, divide, what does it mean? Divide the problem into a number of sub-problems that are smaller instances of the same original problem. Good. Chop the whole um, wood into smaller pieces and then burn them, in other words. Conquer means solve the sub-problems recursively. Good. Those who are not familiar with uh, how to solve problems recursively, I would recommend you to watch my previous lectures where I discuss about uh, what does it mean by recursion and blah blah blah. Good. Combine. In the end, when we have solutions of all smaller sub-problems, we just combine them together and find the solution of the original problem. Isn't it very simple? It's very simple. It's just in the thinking. Good. Just remember DCC. Divide, conquer, combine. Okay. Let's talk about an example. This figure shows a stock chart of a company. Kotar is a hypothetical stock chart of this company, Kotar. And the problem here is that the stock price is volatile. You are allowed to buy one unit of stock only at one time and then sell at a later date. You are also allowed to learn what are the prices of the stock in the future dates. Now your goal is to maximize the profit. As you see here in this chart, day, price and the change in the price is given here. So what can you do? Well, a simple brute force approach. What will you do? You will take, you will take the pair where you buy and sell and then try to see the difference, how much money you make and then in the end you combine together. Right? We call it brute force approach. More formally we can say just try every possible pair of buy and sell dates in which buy date precedes the sell date. Good. Now, if we use that approach, think about if there are n days, how many such pairs you would have? You would have n square roughly such pairs. And if we take that each pair takes a constant time to solve, it's going to take omega n square time to solve. Okay, here omega n square represents the time complexity, lower bound. Those who are not familiar with time complexity, uh, I would recommend you to watch uh, previous lectures where I discuss analysis of algorithms, time and space complexity. Now having said that, what can we do? Can we do something better? Sure, we can do something better. Let's try. Let's try. Let's transform the original problem into something, something different. Okay, what can we transform? Let's think different. Instead of looking at daily prices, let's consider daily change in the price, where the change on the day i is the difference between the prices of the previous day and the next day. Good. So here, let's say we can represent the change in the prices. Uh, we can store the change in the prices in an array A. Those who are not familiar with the, with the array concept or data structures, I would recommend you to watch another video on data structures, previous video. But here, for simplicity, let's assume that we have stored uh, all uh, the differences in the prices in an array A. Now what we do? We just simply uh, want to find the non-empty contiguous portion of this array. We call it a 
subarray such that the values which this subarray will have has the maximum sum and we call this contiguous subarray the maximum subarray or in other words let's say for for this array a see think about from the position number 8 to position number 11 if we total the values which are stored in this subarray we find that the sum is maximum and equal to 43 good because this is just 16 um, positions in the array you quickly scanned and quickly got but think about if there are say 1 million it's not possible you need some automated way that's why we are going doing this exercise we are trying to find an algorithm how to do it okay so now we found that okay the sum of this sub array values is maximum we call it maximum sub array okay now it's very simple that you would want to buy the stock just before eighth day means the day seventh and sell it after the day after the day 11th means you sell it at 12th day and you're gonna end up making 43 dollar per share just in 70 days 17 days sorry isn't it very interesting but but notice here you know in advance what are the future prices so you could got the difference you got the difference but in real world you do not know the future prices good so think about it if somehow you can predict the future prices you can quickly easily make a lot of money believe me good now so what we did there we transformed we transformed the actual input the raw values into a difference so what we got we got some advantage but still it did not solve our problem we still have to check n minus 1 c2 uh, combinations um, and that still we have to check any square sub arrays for the period of n days it didn't solve that much but it gave us some idea can we still do better what do you think okay let's see let's try to find out uh, what we can do uh, we we learn what the divide and conquer approach is let's apply that so what the divide and conquer approach says that divide divide the big problem big problem is like big array into a smaller problem so let's say we partitioned it here at the point m midpoint good and now try to find the solution for the smaller sub problems in other words what can be like our maximum sub array can be either left entirely in the left portion of this array or right portion of this array or somewhere which is crossing the midpoint only three possibilities right okay so this is easy left sub array right sub array it's very similar we divide it again find the solution now with this is tricky a bit when your sub array is crossing your midpoint it looks tricky but apparently it turns out to be since you make it a condition that um, your sub array must has to pass through your selected midpoint so it can be solved in linear time we'll we'll see that later but here now another uh, view how we can see uh, how we solve the, the crossing point when your sub array crosses so we solve you know left uh, sub array we find out what is the 
what is the maximum sum and then we solve right side find out the maximum sum and apparently it can be solved in linear time so we solve this good we, we found the solution when your sub array crosses the midpoint and we already have the solution of the left sub array we divide it again into two pieces and same way we can do with the right sub array and we solve whole thing recursively and we get the solution good so let's let's try further let's try to develop an algorithm so let's try first to find an algorithm where uh, the sub array crosses the selected midpoint here good how we can do that it's a simple notation find maximum crossing sub array some variable let's say the left sum negative number very high number because we want to compare this later on then we declare the sum of the the sub array is zero now what we're gonna do for is a for loop some variable i looping variable from the midpoint that is this is midpoint down to l l becomes your lower bound this one l what we can do sum which is zero we, we are going to store the sum equal to sum plus whatever is the element ai the value value of the ai and then we we uh, compare if the sum is greater than left sum then change the value of the left hand side sum with the sum okay good now also we say that okay we found the maximum left the, and we assign that variable the value of the i whatever is the i here because we just compared and we swap the value okay now so this this procedure for loop gonna continue from the midpoint all the way up to the beginning point that is l or lower bound okay now same way we apply the same procedure to the right side right sub array now here see we have made a condition that our sub array must has to cross through this selected midpoint which we call it m good same way now we increment our looping variable from m plus 1 that is from this this position all the way up to up to high position or the high end of the of this this uh, smaller array and then we just do the same operation we add and then we find the right sum good and what we return here we just simply return whatever is the maximum uh, position what whatever uh, are is the um, maximum left means left sub array position i wherever our sum became greater than the previous value so we return these values max left i and then we return for the right sub array which value was the maximum and which position and then we return the sum good sum of the left sub array and sum of the right sub array now we we found the solution good where for this this uh, green sub array which crosses this midpoint and uh, so it means that the max left i is the leftmost corner of this green sub array and the max right i is the rightmost uh, corner position in this right sub array 
and we return this left sum plus right sum. Good. Now how we can combine? Now we, we found we are halfway done and the next is uh, very simple. We just gonna use this uh, algorithm in the uh, top level uh, algorithm where we're gonna call this recursively. Now find the maximum subarray that was our original subarray. A array L lower bound H upper bound. So if H equal to L means you just have one element in your array. So you just return L H and A of L that becomes your sum and this is lower bound upper bound of your subarray. Otherwise what you do you divide you divide the whole array into two pieces and get the midpoint L plus S divided by 2 good and then you call the same uh, function or algorithm find maximum sub array but here see notice the difference instead of putting the high H you are using M so you are basically trying to solve recursively this left sub array in this is step number five now same way in this step number six you are trying to solve recursively the, so the solution for the right sub array and now left is what is the uh, solution where what is the sub array where sub array crosses your midpoint that we already found here we just call this function good okay now when once we have all these values left right and the third point crossing we just compare simple if the left sum is greater than right sum and left sum left sum means sum of the left sub array is greater than cross sum means the, the sum of this uh, sub array when the sub array crosses the midpoint was gonna uh, happen that it means that what we found left sub array that is the solution okay so we just return whatever position um, starting point of left sub array and the lower bound upper bound and the sum the value same way we check what if our right sub array has the maximum sum good so we return the right sub array otherwise we, we are sure that our sub array which crosses this midpoint has the maximum value good isn't it very simple it's just so simple now what you do just write it down a program in C++ or C or any of your favorite language and implement this algorithm and see how beautiful this works. Good. Hope you have enjoyed this lecture on divide and conquer approach and uh, do not forget to subscribe the professor YouTube channel. If you need private tuitions, uh, coaching lessons, you may contact me. You may send me an email. Once again, um, thank you for subscribing and watching my videos. You have a wonderful day.